Un, dos, tres. Is it too loud? Can you hear something? Well, it's going to be the drills anyway. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, well, I was asking you to get closer so you can hear me and also to see with this year we can have a bit more of interaction. That's why I also come in here. Okay. Well, my name is Javier, and I would like first to know a bit because this group, uh, this course is always a lot of mix from different faculties. So, which one is doing biomedical engineering? Can you raise your hands? Okay, most of you. Uh, which one? What are you doing? Okay. Electrical engineering, you as well. Okay, and. I think you're from Spain, yeah. <laughs> Who else is uh, here as Erasmus? Are you Erasmus? The only one Erasmus? Okay, so this year is quite uh, compact. It's most of you are from biomedical engineering. That's something different, but that's good. Okay, and also as I was saying, uh, one of my hobbies is to do magic, and I'm doing also learning some psychology and hypnosis this year, and I want to try things with you to see if I can get uh, better communication and better participation in my class. Because always when we go to the lab, uh, you are super nice and you ask me questions, if you have. But in the course, always people come here and they are looking like this. And it's very difficult to get feedback. So when you try to explain something, I don't know if you understood or if you just uh, were not listening. So I might be making you to do stupid things, okay? And one of them is gonna be, I want you to uh, look the person that is in your table and present yourself. Or you can say with him, hello, my name is. <laughs> and you can do the same with the other one. <laughs> okay, this is like in church, when you go, te damos la paz. So we are feel a bit uh, more relaxed because we are laughing. Okay, now <laughs> oh, we can continue talking. <laughs> okay, so now I can start with this uh, course. And what I want to do today is first I want to do a quick view of what gonna, the course is going to be. I can explain all the details or, or all the information in the course so you have a really good idea what you will be learning. Then we can have a break and then I will go to Moodle and I will explain all the details about the grades, how it's going to be shared, how are we going to do the exercises, how are we going to do the lab and so on so on. Okay. But first I want to give you the information so then when I explain the rules I can refer to that information. Good? Okay. So it's the first time I'm trying this thing. Okay, this is what I was saying here. And uh, before starting, before starting giving you new information, I want to uh, like draw a map or where I'm going to be moving. Okay, which in the, in the map of acknowledge, let's say, where are we going to be moving and which parts are we going to be touching. So within electronics that you two might know very well, uh, we have we are going to be focusing in electronics in this course, and inside electronics uh, we can have different areas. We can have um, analog electronics, digital electronics. We can have antennas, and we have one big area that is instrumentation. That it means all the electronics that you use for uh, adapting sensors. <coughs> So we have sensors to measure different physical variables around. And in instrumentation within electronics, you learn how to how those sensors work and how to um, adapt them to the digital signal, usually. OK, and inside these sensors or this instrumentation, we could, have, we could be apply, applying um, those sensors to many different purposes. Okay, you can apply to home automation, or you can measure uh, stuff in your uh, car, 
or you can apply those to any kind of environment. But in this course, what we are going to be focusing is in sensors that we apply to uh, our body. And because we are applying sensors to human beings, we will see that we need to have um, specific considerations for safety and so on. And once more, inside of this, uh, inside of this sensor that we are going to be applying for the for measuring in the in the patients or in the human beings, there are many different things that we could be measuring. Okay, we could be measuring the airflow as you uh, you two have been doing in the course we had before Christmas. We could be measuring temperature, but what is more interesting is to measure the electrical potentials produced by our body. Why is this? Because uh, to measure the temperature in my body and to measure the temperature in your house or in your car, the electronics that you need, you might know, are very similar. To build a, a temperature sensor is very similar if I use it to measure temperature in the street or to measure temperature in my mouth. But for the measuring bio potentials, to measure the electricity produced by our body, we need a very specific type of electronics. Okay, and that's what we are going to be uh, studying in this course. So it will be interesting for you that know electronics, and it will be interesting for you that you do uh, biomedical engineering. And for you also, but <laughs> I don't want to let you out. Okay, so as well, we are going to go a bit deeper, and in all the possible uh, biopotentials that we could be measuring in our body. We could be measuring the electroencephalogram, we could be measuring the electromyogram, but in this course we are going to be focusing in the easiest one to measure, that is the electrocardiogram. Okay? So, we can now see um, what are we going to be doing in this course, and the way I want to do this is I'm going to do it from uh, bottom down, okay? Instead of going from bottom up, explaining the basics, and we can understand slowly to go to the final aim, I'm going to do it the other way around. We are going to start with the final aim of the course, that it will be to build this circuit. This is what you have to do at the end of the course. You are going to be building in the lab this electronic circuit that is to measure the electrocardiogram. Okay, and on the way to learn that, we are going to be learning things that later you could be applying to not only measure electrocardiogram, but the same knowledge you can apply to measure other kind of biopotentials, and also the same knowledge you can apply when you will learn about safety to other kind of measurements in the body, and as well, uh, some of the ideas are also coming from instrumentation. Okay, so we are going to be focusing all the time in measuring electrocardiogram, and then we will go lower in this uh, pyramid. We will be lower to get the knowledge when we need it. Hello, Billy. Okay, also uh, we are recording this lecture. I will explain that later. And they will be on Moodle. So, as I said, this is the final aim of the course, and now maybe it's a bit uh, overwhelming, but by the end of the course, we will be uh, focusing in each individual of these blocks, and then you will understand why, what each of them is doing. Okay, so this is the final aim, and now I'm going to start from the very, very beginning. So the very, very beginning uh, to explain the electrocardiogram is when we started, when life started. Okay, this will all make sense later. And like 4,000 million years ago, we start to have the same, uh, the first cells. Well, we start to have, we have like this uh, ocean. Imagine this is, we can do it like that. 
this is the ocean. We have these volcanoes doing. So we have this ocean, and that's you know where all the life started. And we start to have well, we start to have the first like molecules that they start to replicate and so on and so on. And at some point, they decide to cover themselves to protect them from the outside environment. And this is when we have the first um, um, one cell organisms. Okay. So we have uh, a cell that it just has this membrane of uh, lipids that is protecting our, um, probably was something similar to RNI. Uh, inside the cell is protecting that from the rest of the universe, the rest of the ocean, okay? And then at some point, I have this to do remote. And then at some point after these first one cell organisms appear, they start to develop communication systems because as in evolution, for evolution advantages, it's much better if you can communicate somehow with your peers and you can improve your adaptation to the medium. So the first way of communication that they were using, they were using that something very simple, just taking some chemical signals and throw them into the ocean. Okay, I can draw this like a key. And just, you throw it into the ocean and you pray that it will somehow go somewhere or it will eventually arrive to one of your uh, colleagues and it will have some receptor on the membrane that it will understand that signal, right? So this is the most simple way of communication. And then it was working quite well for the time, but then evolution was getting, uh, was like the environment was getting worse and they have to evolve. And they decide, they learn that instead of, can you see something? That, uh, it's very difficult that you, it's, it's very uh, low probability that you throw something in the ocean and somebody will find it. So they start to learn, or not learn, but evolutionally adapt in a way that it makes more sense to just gather together. Okay. And that's when we have, start to have the first uh, multicellular organisms. Okay, and in these multicellular organisms, the first communication, right, the first communication between them, it was still like the same one, okay? We can still communicate with chemical signals, but for that we have some, what is called a junction gap, okay? So we have some holes, physical holes between those cells and we will see that we still have those in our uh, heart cells, for example. And now you want to send one of these chemical signals from one of the cells to the other one. They can go through the inside so we don't lose them in the ocean, yes? But, oops. So, as I was saying, you can send the signals with inside this, so we avoid losing them in the ocean. But you can imagine what happens with my uh, multicellular organism start to grow. Is it gonna be, is it gonna take, you can answer, is it gonna take longer or shorter time when you start growing? It's gonna take much longer to reach the other extreme, right? So we need a better communication system uh, to propagate when our organism is growing. And for that is when we enter into using this uh, action potential. Okay, and have you studied this action potential? Have you 
and you remember how it works. Okay, some people say yes, some people is doubting. I can quickly tell you I will spend more time of this along the course, okay, in the next lecture. And we can refresh that for the people of you that you know. But basically what this is doing is uh, we have the ocean. What is in the ocean? What is the ocean made of? <laughs> water. And what else is in the water? Salt. Yeah. And what is the salt? We have some... Uh, the, the salt like dissolves into two ions, yes. So we have an A and Cl. And when you put that salt into the water, it dissolves into two ions, right? Ion, I don't, I'm, I'm, write, I'm writing sometimes things because I don't know how you pronounce properly in English, okay? So you understand. So we have some ions. So we will have a lot of N. Uh, sodium and chloride that they are floating around the ocean, okay? We will, have more. We will see that uh, one of the ones we use in our body is uh, potassium. Also, you see I do some mistake. Uh, please correct me, okay? So, our system evolved to, and what is something difficult to believe for me, they evolved to develop proteins here in the membrane that they are taking ions like one by one. They are taking atoms one by one and putting them, putting them inside and outside of the cell. So when you do that, because they are uh, electrically charged, they are going to produce a differential in potential between the inside and the outside of the cell. Okay, and that will be happening. in all the cells. Okay, so then we will have this as a resting state. We have this different impotence between the inside and the outside. And we have other type of, we will see this more into the next day, as I said, we have other type of uh, proteins on the membrane that they work as a sensor when they detect a change in pressure, they detect a change in light, they detect some physical change, they will like open. And then because we have a difference in potential outside and inside, and also a difference in concentration, these uh, ions, they will rush in and they will change the potential, uh, the membrane potential. And then we have a specific type of proteins that they are sensing they are sensing this uh, transmembrane potential. So when it has been opened and changed, we have a, another protein that is sensing that change and then it opens. And when it opens, it will do the same. Here they will rise inside and will change the potential. Another of these proteins will activate and open. And then we have this like domino effect. So it will be opening, opening, opening and transmitting this um, electric potential. And that's like super fast when you compare that with sending one of these keys or one of these electrochemical signals. Okay, so then we kept evolving. That was the, we started from just one cell, then we gathered into multicellular organisms, and then we kept evolving uh, into like specialized um, organisms. And it means that these multicellular organisms, they start to, different parts within this system start to adapt and evolve into a specific task. Like for example, like you can see in this cat or in our cell, we, ca we have some of these cells, they evolve to uh, create the lungs or to create the heart or to create the veins. So we have this specialization within the organisms. But what is important here is that the 
communication mechanisms, even though we are this much more advanced system, the communications or, or mechanisms are still the two ones that I was explaining here. Okay? We still have the only communication between our cells is chemical communication. When you have these hormones that they are thrown into the um, blood system, so they can communicate with cells in further points of the body. And for faster communication, we have this electric manipulation uh, for communicating. And we have, let me just see. And we have, as I was saying, we have specialized cells in our bodies, and we have specialized cells that the task that they do is to propagate these electrical signals, okay? And those are the nerves and the neurons. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, we have these specialized cells that they are using electricity to communicate from far points of the body. And then with inside our body, with all these small individual cells start to communicate with electricity, they produce, you assume, all those uh, small signals, they produce a bigger signal that we can measure. Okay, so depending on which cells and which, which area in the body that electricity is happening, we can record different signals. So you can see here some examples, how many you already know, we can see them in the next lecture, but when you are measuring the activity in the brain, in the electroencephalogram, when you measure the activity of the muscles, so all the, you send a signal and all the muscle cells start to activate at the same time. They produce individual pieces of electricity that you zoom them together, it gives you a big signal. And the same happens with the heart. And that's the one we will be working in this course. Okay? So, have you studied how this exactly works in any course? Who has studied how the electricity uh, moves around the heart in each course? Okay, great. So where is it starting? Could you tell me? Okay. So, as you know, I'm surprised everybody, everybody knows so much. Let's say later <laughs> on the questions. So, the electrical impulse starts here, okay? And those are specific cells that as well, I don't know if you might or might know, we have these specific cells that they can be controlled by the brain, or if not, they also have kind of internal timing that the you, they don't have any communication from the brain, they trigger every specific time. So either if they are triggered by the brain or the autonomous system, or if they activate uh, independently, the impulse start here, and then it travels through these nerve cells here to activate, they travel very quickly to activate all these uh, ventricle uh, muscle cells. So the heart compacts, uh, compress, and it sends all the blood to the lungs and to the rest of the body. And then after that, we have this area is a bit of electrically isolated. So that uh, stops a bit here. And then it gathers in another point. Do you know which point? Okay, we can see that next day. It gathers in some point here and then it do the same slowly in the auricula, in the, um, the ventricula, ventricula and auricula, yes. And as I was saying, like all these individual cells uh, producing electricity, you take each of these action potentials at the different areas and points in time, if you zoom all of them together, you will get like what we 
understand as, a, as the electrocardiogram signal. Okay, and then we can see that the R peak is because we have all these individual cells that they are activating very, very fast, uh, very, very close to each other. You can see here. So when you zoom all those individual cells, we have these big uh, spikes in the electrocardiogram signal. Hey, hello. Uh, I had to click the button. It was not the start in itself, so I was just clicking record. But I think it's working. Okay, it does. <laughs> okay, we will see anyway this weather next year. Next uh, lecture. But we can see somebody took. Um, Somebody, based on this idea, like, took a real model of the heart and they made a simulation, okay? I think it's very visual, so you can have a look. They were taking this 3D model of the heart and explaining how the conductivity and how the, how the start of the stimulus works. They can simulate how it propagates on the heart. Okay, so we can see, can you see? So we can see a bit what we were saying. The stimulus starts somewhere in this uh, node and propagates very fast now in the ventricle and then it stops somewhere here and it starts somewhere there. Okay. So this is just we will be working with this because it's the easiest example to understand for later and it's the strongest signal we have, the electrical, strongest electrical signal we have in our body, so it's, it's easier to measure later. Okay, but if we have this electrical signal in our heart and we want to measure that, um, how are we going to be measuring this? Mm, if the signal is happening in the heart and we are gonna, we don't want to uh, open our chest to measure that signal, we are gonna measure that from the surface of the skin. So how is this electrical signal that is produced in the heart, how is that reaching to the surface of the skin? Do you have any idea? How is the electrical signal? What well, the blood pressure you will be measuring in the mechanical pools. You can, I mean, I saw something I forgot to say. If I'm asking you questions, I don't care if you fail, okay? It's more, actually, it's better if you fail because then you will learn that if you don't fail. So if you fail, I don't give a fuck. I prefer that you just say something. So any idea? So we have this electrical signal or this electrical generator inside our uh, chest and I'm gonna measure that from the surface of the skin. What do you think is the electrical signal traveling? Yes. And how is that? What is the differential in potential? So it's differential in, it's a difference in electrical charges, right? Differential potential means that I have at one level, I have lower electrical charge than another. So how is that difference in electrical charge produced in the surface of my skin? Any idea? You that you are the electronics here? <laughs> okay, the question is very simple. Maybe I'm making it a bit confusing, okay? But it will make sense when I tell you. So the idea is that you can visualize your body as a like container of water. Okay, right now, uh, you could see myself, you know, we are like, I don't know, 70% or something they say. Water, like salty water, like our ocean. I'm 70% ocean inside, and I have this um, source of uh, signal generator in my chest that is producing this electrical signal. So the way it propagates to the uh, surface of the skin is, is gonna be 
is you're going to have a electrical signal in this point, and that's going to be moving the ions around it, okay? And then, because you have here a change in electrical potential, that's going to be sending the, moving the ions around. Those ions are going to change the potential. They're going to be moving the ions around, and so on and so on. So we have this, like the effect of propagating of waves when you throw a stone into the lake, that you have this energy or signal propagating as a movement of particles. So we have kind of the same thing inside our body that is moving the ions, okay, by doing this in three dimensions. You can study that, I don't know if they still have this school, but when you do this modeling of, I'm not sure if they do it anymore. But we were, I was taking that course that they were doing modeling of uh, physiology or something, and we were doing that. We were simulating the body in the same way that I have here. Uh, they were, we were building a model of the body, and you define the conductivity and the properties of each of the organs, and you can simulate a signal generator that you place inside the chest, and then you can see how that propagates. Okay, and the way, because when you do electronics, it's super easy to know what happens because uh, the electrons go through only the cable that you have. But when you place that in a three-dimensional space, then we have to apply different kind of physics. We have to apply the physics of uh, fields. But the way of propagating is similar to the sound or the waves on the water. But in this case, instead of having particles, or atoms moving, we have ions moving because of the changes in potential around. Okay, so now that you understand that we have this um, heart producing a signal here, and our body is made of water, we can see the same simulation that we were seeing here. We can see how that propagates along the, the surface of the skin. Okay. So we can see what I was just telling you that in each pump of the heart is producing, okay, I forgot to. So I was saying that's how it propagates, okay, but we have this, it's not a constant uh, DC signal, it's a AC signal or it's a um, signal changing over time. So when that signal generator is produced, that's going to be changing us over time of the surface. So we can see how the signal is produced here. And we can see here what the electrocardiogram state is. And we can see how that's going to be changing the potential in the surface of your skin. Okay, so this, you are still here with me alive. And this is happening to you right now in each pump of your heart. The electrical potential on your skin is changing. Okay, and if you don't believe that, we are going to do an example <coughs> very, very soon. Okay, just one more step before that. So I said uh, the electricity is produced in our heart and it travels to our skin as a movement of ions. But, well, I saw you the answer. <laughs> but how do we convert this current of ions? We want to measure that with current of electrons, so we want to measure that with electronics. So what, is, what do we need to do to convert it, this current of ions into a current of electronics? And I saw you the answer. So the idea is that we use uh, like these electrodes that we also will study more in detail next lecture. So what the electrode is uh, quickly doing is uh, they are converting this current of ion into the same amount of current of electrons like using some chemical reactions, okay? So we will see that more in detail next day. Okay.
So now, as we were saying, in each of you, there is now being a change in potential around your body. And I want to uh, show you that, okay? So in the course, in the labs, uh, you will be, be getting all these components, and like this uh, PC, breadboard, and cables. And then you will have to build that circuit that we were seeing before. This is one of the examples uh, from the previous year. Have you been building electronics before? I guess you just. Please. OK. And you know how to use the oscilloscope. Let's see that. I don't believe you. Who knows how to use the oscilloscope without clicking the auto? <laughs> ah, everybody's using the auto. OK, so I have that is the circuit we are going to be building. Uh, and I have just a, another version of exactly the same circuit, uh, circuit here that is more stable. There's no cables moving. So I can use it in this. OK, and now I need uh, some volunteer. We can have uh, a Spanish girl. What's your name? Paloma. Paloma. OK, so. OK, so questions for the electronics. Uh, we want to measure, yeah, I'm going to be bothering you the time, probably. <laughs> so as I was saying, we have a difference in potential in our body. If we want to measure and amplify a difference in potential, what, uh, what instrumentation would you use? An idea? You can say whatever. You can try. I want, I have two differences, differential differences in potential between two points, and I want to measure that difference and amplify it. What is the circuit you can use? Differential amplifier. Very good. So we will have uh, that's the basic circuit that we will be using. We will be using this. Can you see anything? This differential amplifier. That basically is doing what I said, is measuring potential here, potential there, calculate the difference, and amplify it by a factor that we decide. But we will see in following lectures that this is a really bad option because uh, it has very low um, common mode ratio and very low input impedance. Don't, don't worry about that right now. So a better solution is to use the improved version that is this instrumentation amplifier that is solving those uh, those two um, limitations. And is just, we still have here the differential amplifier, and you were just adding these two components here that we will understand better later. And it's still doing the same, measure between here and here, and amplifies. Okay? So I'm going to take uh, Paloma, and what well, you can see here. Okay. And because we said that the uh, Inside Paloma, the heart is now pumping and it's producing some electricity and that electricity is arriving to the skin. The first thing I want to do is to use these electrodes to convert, I, had, I forgot the, can you scratch a bit? Yeah. Yeah. We are going to remove a bit of the skin, I forgot this path. It's okay, you don't have to make it to bleed. Okay, so now we will convert that current of ions into current of electrodes. Okay. And I'm gonna connect this circuit, one potential here, the other potential there, and I'm gonna calculate the difference and amplify that. 
Okay? And then I have this is connected to this device that is kind of a virtual oscilloscope that we can see here. I think you have been working with that probably. Let's see if we can see something. Okay. Okay, we can see the time scale is very short. Okay, I was hoping to have a worse signal with more noise, but always when you try to do it, when you try to get noise, you don't get it, and when you try to remove it, you will get it. But the, uh, let's see how it goes. So the idea is I'm just uh, measuring between this is connected to this arm, this is connected to the other arm, and just calculating the difference and amplifying that. Okay, and this is connected to the oscilloscope. So we can see that in each pump of the heart that is producing this signal, that again travels to the surface of the skin, is converted into electrons current, and we can amplify that and measure that into the system. And we will see that a bit to have more signal. We will learn that one of the specific problems when we are trying to measure electro, uh, sorry, biopotentials, and that is different to the electronics that you might know, one of the problems is that uh, our body is coupling very well with the is having this capacity coupling with the um, with the mains that we have around. Okay, so we have around here we have all these lamp and all these cables going uh, through the walls, and we will see how that is working as a capacitor between those uh, cables on the walls and our body, and that's producing a small current here that we will see how that's amplified by our instrumentation system, and then we see this 50 hertz signal, okay? So you can see that bit here that we have the... Can you see the mouse? That we have here the electrocardiogram signal, but we also have some other signal here that if we would amplify this, you would see it's exactly a sinus wave of 50 hertz, okay? And to see it better, we will see how if I reduce this capacitor, so meaning I'm getting that cable closer to uh, Paloma, I'm going to reduce that capacitor and that's going to increase the amplitude of this 50 hertz signal. Okay, so right now she's touching it and you can see that that's producing a higher signal. Okay, I can leave it here, that it was a good, here is a good amount. <laughs> so we will see also how are the methods that we can use to solve this. Okay, the easiest method uh, would be to connect her also to ground we will understand that later, or we will also learn uh, how this uh, driven, we will see a more advanced way that is using this driven Rayleigh circuit. Uh, we can see 
an example of that, okay? So if now you can connect this somewhere here. So if I now connect her to this uh, ground of this driven right left circuit, I'm supposed to get it better. Okay, probably it's because uh, we were not doing this like, very carefully and cleaning up with the skin and so on and so on. So you will, at the end of the course, you will understand why this is not working today, okay? <laughs> and finally, um, we will also see that also see how once we have removed these 50 hertz and so on, we are still measuring uh, in Paloma all the electrical activity going in the body. And then we will see how the different um, biopot uh, biopotentials that we have in the body, they have different frequency ranges and different amplitudes. Okay. So we can see now that the you, for example, tends your arm, that's going to produce, apart from the electrical activity of the heart, it's going to produce other signal that we cannot see very well. Okay, so finally, in our circuit, uh, what would you do if you want to remove this? Mm, you want to separate these two signals in frequency, what do you can use? Uh -huh. So finally, we will add this filter to our circuit to remove the baseline and to remove the higher frequency that we don't want to see. Okay? So that will be basically what we are going to be doing in this course. I will explain all that I have been explaining today, but in much more detail, and I will add much more information. But the idea is that that we will, um, you, your aim is to beat the circuit, and we will go step by step, seeing what is the, as I was trying to do today. Like we start with a simple circuit, we will see what are the problems, so we solve them. We will see that we have new problems, so we solve them and so on, so on, so on, until we arrive to our final perfectly working, like today, uh, circuit. Okay? So we can have a small break, and then I prepare uh, the Moodle stuff, and we can go into the details, okay? Thank you, Paloma. <laughs>
sola. Okay, so we can go quickly through this information. So the most important thing is uh, before taking the co this course, as you saw, we are gonna be working in the lab with electronics. You will have to calculate some simple circuits. So for taking this course, but most of you already told me that you have done so, right? But for taking this course, you need to have some knowledge in basic electronics and also some knowledge in electronic labs. And I was checking and I'm not very sure if these courses still exist. I think they are the ones that they are supposed to be. But if you are from TUT, like you should have taken this course or something similar. Okay. And also, if you have been here for a long time, but I don't think so. You cannot take this course if you already have taken uh, one of these because it has been changing a lot over the, I have been teaching this for four years and it has changed the name three times. <laughs> so those are the names that they had before. So if you took any of those courses, yeah, you cannot take this one. Okay, this is still someone can I ask you again, like have you work, have you been doing analysis of circuits? Uh -huh. Can you raise your hand? You haven't? Yes? <laughs> and you have been working in the lab and building circuits in the lab? Please raise your hands again to be sure. Okay. Perfect. It's the first year I have this. It's going to be a good year. Okay, so then as you can see here, the whole grade is gonna be divided in three parts. I will have, uh, we are gonna be doing weekly exercises. So it means after the lecture, I will give you some uh, exercises to um, solidify what you have been learning and to check if you have been learning what I was explaining on the lectures. Then we will have uh, some labs. Uh, we have three small labs to build this circuit and then the final exam. So it will be 20, 20 and 60 percent. And all the timetables for this, I will explain that, I will go into that. Okay. So about the lectures, about the lectures, uh, they will be recorded. Mm, let me see one second. Okay, let's do it like this. So, this model will be divided into blocks for one block for each week, okay? And we are gonna have these seven weeks. And you can see the content I was explaining in the previous uh, lecture. We can see here what we are gonna be learning again in each week, okay? So the first week is this one introduction then the next week we will study in more detail all the electrical signal generation and propagation to the surface and the electrodes. Then next uh, week three, we will start reviewing some electronics and seeing the differential uh, amplifier and instrumentation amplifier. Then week four, sorry, week for is when we will see the electrodes. Then week five, we will see how, once we know how the electrodes work, how to put everything together, our amplifying circuit with the electrodes 
and the biopotentials. So we are going to be seeing these three. Uh, week one, our body. Week two, the electronics. Week three, the electrodes. Week four, all together. Okay? And then week six, uh, we will see safety consideration that we need to have. And hopefully, week seven, if everything goes right, I will explain something a bit more advanced that is necessarily in the impedance. Okay. So you can see here all the lectures and at what time, content, and where. After each lecture, you will have one week to do some weekly exercises. And here you have the deadline. And this, I will explain now you how to do these weekly exercises, and they are going to be automatic. So if you just meet the deadline, there is nothing I can do, okay? And you just will miss that point. It's not a big deal. And for the labs, we will have, I have divided this building of the circuit in three parts. The first lab will be next week. And we are going to start by the last part that is building this uh, analog filter, probably you have that been doing that already, but I want you to be sure that everybody learns how to use the devices and you choose a lab station and then you get familiar with the devices you are gonna be using. So this first one is a bit simple and then one then we will build the circuit and finally we will put the circuit together again with the body. Okay, the way the lab will be is I will give you some tasks for the lab and we will have, after the, this lecture, we will have two hours in the lab where I will be there with you. So you can work and ask me questions and I can go around and check everything is going fine. But this is very important, okay, because every year in the feedback, some people is telling me that there was not enough time. Uh, this year I have added one more hour. Last year was one, this year is going to be two hours. But uh, still, you can go to the lab at any time that you want. You will have access. And if you are stuck along the week in some question, you can send me an email and I can go to the lab and meet you at any point, okay? So at first, we will try to do everything in these two hours, but if it's not possible, you can go at any time, and if you need help, you also can ask me at any time. Okay, let's see if I'm forgetting something about this. So we will have three laps, and it will be totally 20%, because the first one is very easy, I'm gonna give it just 5%, and then lab two and lab three equally 7.5. Okay. So then this is the global picture of the uh, course. And now I'm gonna show you, we will have these blocks that it will be opening week by week, and I'm gonna show you what you will have every week in one of these blocks. Okay, so you will have here the slides that I was using for the lecture. And you will, you will have also here the video that is being recorded. Okay, don't trust the video, don't believe that, okay, I can miss this course, uh, this class, because I can watch it in video, because this is like very experimental and sometimes it's super bad sound or sometimes it is stop working. So don't really rely on the video. This is like later, if you have missed something, it can help you, but don't rely 100% on the video at this point. Okay, now for the exercises, I want to do something different this year, so I'm gonna do an example of how we are gonna do that. They will be, as I say, 20% of the whole course. And I don't know yet how many exercises 
I will have each week. It will depend on how the course, the class is going. I will prepare the exercises, or maybe one week you have two, like this one, or maybe you have five. So what I will do is, at the end of the course, I will take all the exercises, all the weekly exercises, and calculate the average of all of that, and that will be 20% of your grade. Okay. The purpose of the exercises is that, as I said, uh, you come here and you look at me, the information goes like something like this, and maybe disappears. But the learning, uh, the learning happens when you try something. Okay? There is this, there is psychology thing that when you read something, you keep, I think, 30%. When you do something, you keep like 50, and when you explain something, you keep 70% of that information in your brain. Because all the activity you have to do to explain something, uh, make it like, write it hard into your brain. Okay, so the purpose of the exercise is that you at least try to do something. And then, that's when you learn, and then if you do all of them, when you go to the exam, uh, it will be much easier. And also, another point of the exercises is that you, it's a very safe way of trying something, and if you do a mistake, then you learn, and when you go to the exam, you don't do it again. Okay, all this is common sense, but I have to repeat it. So, let's see how we are gonna do the exercises, because I want to do it something that maybe you have been not doing it this way in other courses. Some water. So what I want to do, what I want to do is for each weekly exercises is gonna be two steps, okay? If you go to Moodle, you will see them in these two mm, tasks. What is that is called? The first one, so you will see here weekly exercise, week one, uh, exercise one, weekly exercise, week one, exercise two, and we will have, can you see the mouse? And, and you will see that there are two tasks for each of them. And the point of this is that in the first task, you are gonna answer the exercise and then that will open the second one where I'm gonna give you the correct answer to that question so that you can immediately correct that and grade it and then you submit that again, okay? I'm gonna do an example of this. The point of this is that I was reading this book in some pedagogical courses. The point of this is that um, when you do the exercise, and I have to also be a student, as you can imagine, when you do the exercise, you just do it, because you have to do it before the deadline, probably half an hour before, you quickly do it, you submit it to Moodle, and then I spend time correcting them, and I send you the correction, and probably, and I was doing that, you will not look at that correction until the day before the exam. So, a better way to do that, and probably when you go, the day before the exam, you go to read that, and you're like, wow, I don't know what I was doing here, and I have no idea if it's right or not. So, what I'm gonna do is this way, that uh, you do the exercise, and immediately at that point that you are like curious about if you have done it right or, or wrong, not in three weeks that you already don't remember, then you will get the correct answer, and then also I will force you to correct them yourself, so you can see what is your mistake, and you can learn from it, and then you can submit it, okay? And I have to just double check everything. Everything makes sense? Okay, so we can do an example of that. Um, we could do that, you can do that on Moodle, but what I recommend you to do is, have you, do you have the Moodle app on your phone? Okay, so for this course is, uh, I think it's a better idea because you will see, I'm gonna show you now with an example what is the mechanics for this. Okay, so to show you and to record this on video, 
I have this like Android emulator here. Okay, so imagine this is my phone, what is on the screen. And I can just, I don't know how to do this. I can, apparently this emulator is only for playing. <laughs> but imagine this is my phone, it doesn't look like this at all, but it's my phone. I go to the model mobile application, okay? And just don't install it just yet, please pay a bit of attention this, and then you can do that, okay? So leave your phones on the table. Now imagine you have installed it, and then you will have here, it will be looking a bit different. This, I think this is for a like, tablet, but then your phone will be looking just different layout, but it's the same content. So I can go here to basics of medical electronics, and I will have just exactly the same information that on Moodle. Okay. So I can go here with all these blocks. At the moment I have block week one. You here us have here as well the same information, but what we are gonna be focusing is on the weekly exercises, okay? So quick thing, you can see that Here, both of them appear, but one is telling you that it's blocked. Here, only the one that is unblocked appears, okay? But it's much easier for us. So anyway, we are gonna do together the first weekly exercise, okay? And you can do it later. So I can go here to my first weekly exercise, and I have here the question. Okay, I'm just reminding you here some um, instructions to do it. So solve the following question on a piece of paper and submit a picture of your paper answer. And once ready, we will have to accept this submission. Okay, that's the question. And here I have some information that is from Moodle. So we are gonna do that. I'm gonna get, as an example here, a piece of paper. And I can take a pen and it's telling me, okay, the question is, can you draw the electric circuit of a RC high pass filter? So I'm gonna do that. Okay, and then calculate the cut of frequency. So I'm going to do this. Okay, and then if I calculate the result, bit here. I'm gonna do it run on purpose. Okay, so I have answered here this question. So now I have here the question, I have my answer, so I can submit it. And why I'm asking you to do it on it's better to do it on the phone is because we can directly take a picture with the phone. Okay, so make things very easy. So again, add submission. I'm gonna add a file. And then because I'm on my phone, it's asking me directly if I want to use the camera. Okay. And imagine this is my phone camera, okay? And I have here I don't know what it is. I have here my phone, so I can take a picture of my... It's a bit difficult like this, okay? But it will be easier with the phone. So this is my answer. So I can take 
a picture of my answer with the phone. Hopefully it looks better. Okay. So now I have the picture. You can double check that everything is readable, okay? Because I have to read this later. So once you have the picture of your answer there, you can save here. Accept. And this is very important now, okay, listen. Once I have submit, I can still change it if I want. Okay, I can go and edit submission, blah, 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 and I can do it as many times as I want. But to complete this task, I have to um, submit assignment, okay? And this will change from draft, it will change to submit it. But once I have clicked here, I cannot redo it again because that's gonna open the answer. So once you have submitted, you know the answer in Microsoft. search. So here is telling you, are you sure this, you cannot go back after this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. So now I have submitted my answer. You still can see the file here if you want, and I don't have more options in this first task. And now if I go back, I can see that it has opened another task, okay? I have answered the one that is called answer question, and I, I have opened a new one that is correct my answer. And you can also see that it's marked here. So once that I have submitted my answer, I can go to correct my answer, and I can see the real answer of the teacher, okay? and it will be this one. So I can go back to what I was doing here, and I can see, okay, let's compare. Okay, how this, uh, this is right, this is good, but I fuck it up when I was doing the calculations. So I can take a red pen, if you do some mistake, take a red pen, and you can correct it yourself, okay? So I was, here I calculated uh, 0.6, but it's 0 0.06. So I can do like this. Maybe better with another pen. And also, very important, I want you to give you a grade on the paper, okay? So either if you do it correct or incorrect, you have to write something in this paper. Okay, and the grade must be from between zero and 10. So, because it was a small mistake, I'm gonna give myself like an eight. Okay? And now this is your answer and your, cor is your corrected answer. So now we just have to do the same and submit this. So I can come here at submission, at file, take picture, okay, so can you see now, I was doing this small mistake, so I can put this here, you can even write something to me you want, okay, you can say, damn, I was doing a small mistake, uh, please be gentle or something, I don't know, whatever. Or, or you have some problem understanding the question, you can also write it, you know, as a feedback. Like, uh, I answered this because I was understanding the question in a different way. And that's also super helpful for me, so next year I can rephrase the question or I can see if everybody was having the same mistake, okay? So feel free to write anything, but at least write the grade that I have put here. So again, make sure that everything can be read because I will have to read it. And if everything is right, you can just send it. Sorry, you have to save here. OK. 
Okay. And now this one you don't have to uh, send submission. You can change this one as many times as you want before the deadline. Okay. That's what you can edit here. And then this will be clicked. I will go every week through your exercises and I will double check them that you have done them and correct them. And then I will give you your grade or if I think you were uh, too hard with yourself, I will give you more. Or if you were trying to cheat and give you <laughs> more, I will adapt the grade still. I will choose still the grade, but I will have a good orientation with yours. Okay, so then uh, at the end of the week, I will give you a grade and then this will become and then you can go and do the same with the next one. Okay. Any questions? From from zero to ten. Okay. This is also let's see here. This also here in the instructions in all the um, I haven't done it yet, but in all the questions, I will have always these instructions to remind you how to do it. Okay. And we have been trying this also in iPhone, so it's supposed to work also in iPhone. But if for some reason it doesn't work, you still can answer everything on the web version of Moodle, okay? But still, if you find some problems with the phone, just let me know, because this is a bit experimental as of this year, and I want to see how it goes. Okay. So that's how you will be making the exercises, so you can correct them yourselves, yourselves and learn. And then I will try to the deadline will be, we have the lectures uh, Tuesdays, the deadline will be Mondays like at 12, okay? So I will try to correct them or go through them uh, the two hours before our lecture. So then if I see everything was okay, no problem, or if I see everybody was doing the same mistake or there was some mistakes, I can use the first 10 minutes of the lecture to correct or go to throw some of the exercises if it was a problem, okay? What else? Mm. I don't know, am I forgetting something? Ah, yes. Um, well, the next week also we'll have here some information about how to do the weekly, uh, sorry, the labs. We can go that to that next week. But, so this is the end. I'm gonna tell you what you have to do for the next week. So for the next week, go install this application on your phone and do these two exercises. They are very simple, as you could see, but I want to at least see that uh, everybody understands how it works. And even if you want, you can fail, okay? Uh, you do these two exercises, they will be correct for all of you. I just want to see how it goes. So you can also do a mistake if you want. And then you learn how to do it when you do mistake. And you have to do these exercises for next week and also for the labs. We are gonna have some groups. So you also need to come here and join one of these groups. And uh, there are like 21 signups. So, do you prefer smaller groups, or it could be between three and four? I think it's better. Let's pick it three. Okay. I'm gonna change this. <laughs> so. 21, well, wait. Because maybe somebody disappears, you will be only two. Okay, between, between three and four, it's okay. 
you can choose. You want to be three or four. Okay, so come here and join one of these groups. And and that that's everything. Ah, if you have any questions, you can. Uh, so I guess you have this in all the courses in Moodle. You can come here and use this forum. So when you ask a question, everybody will see that question, and I will answer it. Okay, you don't have any more questions. We can finish with this. And then I see you next week. Okay, kitos. Thank you.